Okay, guys. Let's start. In times like these, being a citizen is a big job. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the virtues of self-rule and debate the state of our republic. Welcome to the Citizens Prerogative Podcast. This is the voice of your nerdy host, Michael Piscatelli, and we are blessed with a co-host whose passion for our republic precedes him everywhere he goes, Raymond Wong Jr. Yes, thank you. A media star uh, on the rise, I'm assured. So bright, so bright. Get your sunglasses. Season two, that's where we are. This is going to be episode number 38. And the title for now is going to be The Environment That Media Created. Mwahaha. I think we got Very two. ominous. <laughs> I I mean, you're, you're good. You know what, Michael? You've got a voice for radio. And I want to stress, that's where it all started, ladies and gentlemen. I want to take you back and take you back in history, the early days. You know, the radio had come out and really connected Americans for purposes of talking about the war and entertainment, et cetera. It was a powerful communication tool that probably made us freer, stronger, more informed. Uh, as time went on, this tool evolved and eventually we had the boob tube or the TV. So television, visual, for the first time in history, the central government, if you will, or media, if you will, had the ability to invoke both audible and visual senses of people. And this gave an amazing amount of control over the American psyche and the American household. It was a portal of control, so much so that throughout the years, we've had legislation which is very clear about what can and cannot be advertised within TV. And that's because this is a very powerful tool. So I just wanted to remind everyone that this is a new thing. You know, we're only a hundred years roughly into this new communication tool, which is extremely powerful and does things which was never intended for our lizard brains. We were never meant to have this level of connectivity to one thought, one central nervous system being what media created. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a history tour that we are now in this system that has always been owned by a select few, okay? It was never mass owned. Not till the internet came about has it been more accessible. And it's been dangerous, okay? Because we have misinformation everywhere. So there's good and bad with the power of these connection tools. But please understand, the ones that have been doing it the longest are these media companies. And the environment we live in and the misinformation we live in was created by them. Oh, that's right. And it'd be interesting to do, you know, the history on maybe the money or the families, <laughs> the lineages, the fam familial lineages behind some of the oldest media empires that are still alive, wielding that power, you know, um, that's always a tricky thing. I, I'm just, for the moment, I'm kind of hung up on the recent Purdue Pharma news and the family behind Purdue Pharma and Oxycontin and all that stuff, right? And that is just, I can't wait to go back and dig into it because it's just a, a snapshot. It's a picture of the the big they, the big other, whatever that sometimes we refer to, these, you know, these families that have just had money for generations and you know their whole purpose is to make sure that that money continues into the next generation and you know they have a very different um, set of human conditions that they suffer through than than those who aren't born into wealth um, those of us who have to work for money versus those who are wealthy who do not have to work for money so medias Media has got some similar contraptions. And then you've got some, like you said, it's more democratized than ever. So we've got upstarts everywhere. You mentioned heavy regulation because of the, you know, potential side effects or pitfalls of using media in an unchecked way. It makes me wonder how much of those laws still apply to productions solely over the internet. You know, the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, to more or less degree still regulates the companies that own the internet 
But as far as responsibility to the content and regulating the producers of content over those channels, I think is probably far less now, more like it was longer ago. Um, and it'll be interesting to see once again, if legislatures and, and Congress rise to the occasion of actually making sure that all of the good lessons we've learned from the past are paid forward to these new channels and mediums. Um, especially because of the risks that you outlaid, Ray, it, misinformation. The, you know, so much stuff is just available and you don't know who's just sitting in their apartment, you know, creating stuff versus an actual media you know, company who's done research, you know, is paid for sources or whatever. Um, they all kind of look the same. Now they're getting there. Technology is there. And I don't even want to talk about deep fakes. That's a whole nother ballgame. But we're going to zero in a little bit about, you know, some of the corruption that's weeded in, maybe has always been there. Um, you know, don't take any of it for granted. It's all there to make a money. It's all there to make money. It's all there for profit for the most part, I guess, unless okay. what, unless it's PBS news hour. I mean, yeah. I mean, let, let's be, let's be capitalists really quick, Michael and, yeah. and, and honor the, those that came before us and invested the infrastructure to make this all happen. Cause frankly, you know, that's one of the arguments for capitalism and, and for these Titans of industry and such that you couldn't have had this without companies growing and, and consolidating and buying each other out and building the infrastructure. We now enjoy this internet wouldn't be here without massive legwork of laying uh, you know, cables and pipelines of, of data that had already been established through those phone lines, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to acknowledge that as a capitalist, but I also want to say that, you know, eventually you have to give up the goose. You know, once you discover it, once it's great and you've made your money, mm -hmm. there's a time when you move out of profitability and just sucking all the money out of it to making it more unilateral or available something switches, right? We start to pull back accessibility instead of pushing accessibility wider and reducing the cost, right? You just, you just kind of stick with what you have and raise the price. Yeah. It all, you know, it's a decision about what kind of society we want to have, right? Are we a society that pays forward into the public good for the betterment of our you know, system in, into perpetuity and to show, remember, we used to compete. We used to say, hey, look, other countries, look how great capitalism married to the Republic is in the United States, because we can do all these amazing things, you know, back in the 50s or whatever. I don't know, Pan Pacific Exposition, World Fairs, whatever was still going on. And GE and all them couldn't wait to just show off, right, the modern kitchen in the modern home in the US, it was like, oh, look what capitalism can do versus communism and many of the other systems that we compete with. We got a little, I would say we're a little distracted today. Um, but yeah, it's a good point. You know, it costs money. People got their return on investment and there is a public good, a, a really demonstrable public good that can be evidenced through having this level of connectivity. And I hope that the next infrastructure bill gets passed and, and fully expands access to broadband for all Americans. Um, it's critical. Here, here. I mean, not just because we're delivered via broadband, but um, for the most part, but uh, the, our speeches, and, and, you know, I, I like that. And, and you know what, it, it's not changed. You know, people are still saying the same thing about democracy, democracy. They're just saying like, Oh my God, God, look what democracy can do. So the tone has changed about so so <laughs> How messy. we just need to fix the tone, right? We just need to get it back to look what democracy can do instead of look what democracy can do. Ugh. Give too many people the right to vote. No. <laughs> uh yeah, and that because that's a big difference. We we don't talk about it much on this show, but you know, there's huge differences between how the countries in Europe and the UK run themselves versus us, even to this day. They do have representative forms of governance. You could call them self-rule. Um, but there are some aspects of it that are just very patriarchal, very elite. Um, right? Like the House of Lords yeah. isn't, you know, not elected. There's still well, I mean, a House of Commons. That's who gets elected. <laughs> well, the whole idea of coalition governments, like, okay, right. coalition government means that it's a group of people that are like, we're going to figure out how to rule aside from the people's 
will. Yeah. <laughs> Basically yeah. is what I hear. We're going to force the compromises that the people don't want to make. That's how you get austerity in representative um, systems. Anyway, we digress back to media. So <laughs> um, maybe I can segue us right uh, back on track here. Um, one of our, we'll get to calls to action later, but one of the big things here we're going to be painting is like, get a sense of how corruption seeds certain things in the systems that you participate in or that you're privy to because corruption is rampant today in just about everything we've made it legal in all kinds of systems including politics but especially the media world and the fact that you know fcc regulations or f yeah fcc i might have said ftc earlier that's trade i, I meant communications commissions fcc may or may not you know be coming to bear in the same ways that it maybe was intended to. So we need to be cognizant. We need to be on the lookout. We need to be aware of what the biases are or the angles are that our news sources or our sources of information take. You know, it's we are in the era of niches, nichiness everywhere, right? Anybody's trying to carve out some space where that they can get some attention. Um, so uh, facts are relative, um, it seems, these days. You got to do your best to figure out what the most likely set of truths are <laughs> for any given set of facts. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's something that is honestly a skill. And so we just have to be cognizant. It's okay to eat bias. It's okay to consume bias. You just need to know what it is. It's okay to eat fast food once in a very blue moon um, for your body, I'm saying. Um, but you know, you need to know that's what you're doing, right? You need to know the cause and the effect. And so the same thing is true for information. The quality of the information you ingest has a bearing on the quality of how you think and are able to think. And so it's important to be open, right? It's important to try and be loyal to the facts as much as possible so that you can understand the truths as they are on the ground. And, you know, there's multiple truths. Ray and I have talked about it in prior episodes where, you know, we, we each live our own truth and somewhere between our truths, the facts exist, right? We have to agree, you know, a stone is a stone. There are just some areas of commonality that have to exist in order for us to function as a society, much less a republic. And the Republic is based on, you know, free speech and open thought, you know, and it doesn't mean that they're all truthful or factual. So it's up to us to figure out, you know, what we're putting into our diet, into our media diet. And these companies, all the companies, nichiness or otherwise, right now, they're just trying to make money, make money to make more content to make more money. So um, I have a little aside here about loyalty you know, loyalty to the Republic and the constitution for which it stands. Um, and, and we have to have loyalty to that over any individual, any set of ideals, right? And media done correctly, done right, should criticize with the aim of making a more perfect union, not a corrupt one. Media companies, if they start advocating for one political sphere or another political sphere, then you need to make sure you categorize them as like a political operative, a lobbyist, you know, and they have a specific set of biases. So you have to take their air quote facts or their truth, know what shade it is and compare it to something that has an opposite shade bias or angle. I hate to ask this of everybody, but it's actually the responsibility we have to ourselves to have any idea of what's real or truthful outside of our personal experience. So to take others' word for things, we need to test that word. We need to maybe trust it, but of course, always verify it. And the only way we can verify it is by pitting competitors against each other and seeing what they're saying about the same thing, if they're even talking about the same thing. Today, it's a challenge. Today, it's a challenge to find two, you know, equally oppositely weighted organizations talking about the exact same thing anymore. They avoid doing that. They're trying to own their niches. So we have to be more vigilant than ever. As you consume media, 
uh, think of it as a bean dip, a seven layer bean dip. You don't just take off the top layer, right? You scoop deep, you get into the stuff you like. Sometimes there's that freaky layer of, uh, you know, guacamole <laughs> that I don't like. You know, I just don't go that deep. You know, so I, I just, I think that when it comes to consuming media, the big mistake people make is they like, oh, I found my guy or my gal or my source, right? And that, that's not how the world ever should have worked. That's not how you run your life, right? You don't talk to one person and then go run and make a decision, I hope. Hmm. Yeah, or just, you know, parrot that information. You know what they call that bias confirmation, right? Where we stop with who agrees with us. We only talk with who agrees with us. We have a patriotic, solemn duty to not do that, not create tunnel vision for ourselves. Survey to survey, you know, like that's the freedom of speech. That's the freedom of speech you don't have. Like you have every right to ask someone their opinion and they can say that's none of your business. And you can say, well, you have your own freedoms too. What a wonderful country we live in. And then you dance off. I hope so. Maybe skip. Skipping is fun. I don't see enough of that anymore. Yeah, why can't you disagree and skip? That's what the problem is. Like the senators and the and the and the legislatures, they need to they need to disagree and then skip together, and they'll be much happier. And also, we won't have to worry about age limits because skipping will take care of everything. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. I had a lot of thoughts that are just going to stay in my mind while we hear a message from our sponsor. <laughs> Even though you've heard it before, it is still true. The war is never over and every battle counts. I know you are tirelessly demonstrating good citizenry on the daily through actions and words, and you donate your time and your money to causes that count. Thank you. The time is now to deeply re-examine our current implementation of governance for the dawning of a new day. We're a proud sponsor of Citizens Prerogative Podcast, a major partner in spreading the good word about civic love and the power of change for us all. At Citizen Do Good, we want to empower all citizens to participate in the Republic in a reconstructive way. And with that goal in mind, we need your help to stay on mission and grow this community. Please rate the podcast with five stars on iTunes through the app on the web or on your device. If you don't feel you can give us five stars, then let us know why on our sponsor's Facebook page, Citizen Do Good. Also, make sure you join our newsletter at citizendogood.com. You'll get updates every couple of months on our antics, not just the podcast. While you're there, check out the shop. It has specialty merch and provides a way to make a one-time contribution that helps us pay for production and for hosting. Feel free to give us any suggestions directly through the Contact Us page. Thanks for your support. You know, at our uh, sponsor, Citizen Do Good, they have a saying, and that is that all news is best served with a side of facts. And facts are a dish best served cold. And when I, when I think about that, it makes sense to me because we're so quick to take a fact and run with it. Like, I got it, right? I got it. I got it. No, like facts and, and analy you know, analyzing something, you're supposed to set it to the side, compare it with other things, right? It should take time. Like, I like that saying because the idea is that facts are served cold because you have to give time to sleep on it. Like if you get it right hot off the press and then you share it, and that's the problem with media like that, or sorry, uh, current um, social media, that, that instant gratification of the share, right? Nobody takes the time to let it cool down and, and, really be, and really understand and frankly digest the information. No, that's, I like that phrase too. That was a good one. Thank you. Best serve cold. Because if it's hot, it's volatile right? It's volatile. It's still figuring itself out. The flavor is not quite settled or fully zhuzhed into the meal, <laughs> into the facts. Um, and that also uh, lies a truth towards facts and that they are not necessarily immutable. It depends on what it's about. And I know we hate nuance, but there's nothing but nuance in life. The, a fact about a rock is probably one of the coldest facts out there, unless we come up with a new way of dating rocks. I mean, you know, figuring out when they came into existence. But you think about, we can all agree on certain aspects of a rock other than how old it is. 
but the easily observable things that we can see with our naked eye and feel with our hands, those are that is a cold dish. That is about as cold a dish as you can get. Now, if you consider that, you know, there's facts about a rock versus the facts we just learned yesterday. <laughs> yesterday's fact is very hot, right? Yeah, I'd like to see somebody come in to a general conversation and try to introduce rocks as an interesting fact. Like, did you know rocks are hard and there are different types of rocks? And, you know, everyone at the table would stop and say, oh, my goodness, I think even far leaning right supporters would be like, my goodness, this is known. <laughs> Who is this idiot? <laughs> Wow, we have some slow people in the family. <laughs> yeah, go throw rocks is the same for a reason. Oh, and so is hot off the press. And many of the words that have been hot off the press have been flat out wrong. And respect to all the geologists out there. Of course, I am not digging anything at the profession. I'm sure at your dinner tables, rocks are all the rage. I would hope so. Uh, and there, I mean, I'm not going to nerd out on it. I can nerd out on any topic. <laughs> but I do like rocks. They're interesting. They tell us a lot. Um, yeah, so let's just say that it's worth repeating. Um, if that's an action item, I think it is a good one for everyone. All news is best served with a side of facts. Facts are a dish best served cold. And I love the food analogy because of how much we've harped on the quality of your food and knowing what it is. Honestly, I don't care what your personal choices are for what you eat, just as long as you are cognitively aware of the consequences of eating whatever you're eating. And I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I like, uh, you like McDonald's. I like, I mean, I, mean, I, say I like McDonald's. You like Fox News, equally damaging. And, and, and enjoyable in their own ways. Um, and so you need to make sure that when you consume media for the purpose of enjoyment, that you don't eat too much. <laughs> um, and you know that you're just, it's just ice cream. You know, there's no material nutrition in, in that ice cream, but it's still enjoyable. It still lights up some area of your brain. You know, it's tickle, it tickles something. You want to be true, even if it's not, and you know it. Um, I, I don't, I'm not going to say we shouldn't have the free will and agency to indulge in those things, but it's, it's very dangerous when you wake up, you know, when you're feeling really lethargic, cause that's all you've been doing is eating ice cream and you probably are disillusioned. You probably aren't happier as a person eating ice cream all the time. Um, you're probably pretty pissed off about things all the time. So have a balanced diet. Don't, you know, just don't, don't only feed your devil. You got to feed your angel too. give your angel a chance. And that doesn't mean eating. That doesn't mean if you were binging on vanilla, you go eat chocolate. Okay. Not at all. Yeah. yeah like that's the wrong balance. So that's, that's the wrong balance. You're right. Like it's, it is, you, you, you've got, to, and that's, that's like saying you just watch a different pundit or you watch a different uh, an anchor on a source, right? They, these are companies, they're corporations out there. All of these major corporations um, have their interests baked into what they're giving you. And you just got to learn to tell the difference. And, and as we go along, we're going to work to try to tell the difference. And we're going to share that with you. And, and right now there is, there is a huge challenge out there, but it's obvious more than ever. And here's the thing, here's the kicker, right? All of them have a hidden agenda right now. There's there's very few that are not. And I think that's human nature, right? Mike, can you get away from not baking in your own bias? Is it, is it so it's up to you as an individual to filter bias effectively? I maybe. It it always comes down to who your message is intended for. So as humans, as individuals, when we talk to our boss versus our best friend of 30 years, <laughs> we are using a very different voice. We're using a very different filter. It, that is just a function of life. And so there are biases built into all those communications between your inside jokes and your whatever conditioning you have to interact with your boss. Um, you, you can't get around it. And so just know it's a, it's a soup. We're in a soup. It's a mess. Um, and you have to you know figure out the parts and bits you want and don't want. And, 
and the effects of those things at the same time. So be cognizant of your mind and body. Like if, if watching something stresses you out all the time, stop it, watch something else, do the opposite, go, go watch a nature show or go for a walk in nature or something. Ay, ay, ay. But, um, there's some more con concrete things you can do too, but I don't want to cut you off. No, I was cutting you off. That's what I was doing as uh, and I, it's, I just, I just, I just, I think it's, the call to action is, is it's not black and white. And I think that's tough is that people really want to file it away, check box it away. And I think mm. that for most things in our lives, that's easy to do, but you, there's no finality in things that are outside of your control, which includes politics, the news, the general public, and what's going on in the world right now that's affecting us and that we're letting affect our families, friends, and our relationships the media put this environment here. They generated it because they want us to not talk to each other. They want us to stay hooked in for that red meat. So the media has created a its, its own self-perpetuating system where you're not going to talk to your family because they just happen to be watching the wrong news channel now, right? So they've created a dedicated advertisement source, a dedicated revenue generator, and they doubled their profits because they got you two against each other. So this family that could have spent time talking to each other, being growing the family, raising a village, raising their children, they're now a village divided because the environment which media developed. Mm -hmm. What a powerful message, Ray, and especially because those are just ideas that came through the tube, you know, bringing it back to the opening about the history of this thing. The signals that come out of that box are powerful um, in ways that divide us through our families. And not to say that everybody's family is perfect and maybe you already had points of disagreement, um, but the environment like you said, really makes it difficult for us to try and come together. And so that's, that's going to be our challenge. I mean, A, you know, have greater awareness around these things and B, trying to reach through it, through the fog and try and like give one another the benefit of the doubt or, you know, focus on what we have in common. I think it's really important because it, the soup isn't any, it isn't that different from where it's ever been. And the only way we've ever come through these things is by coming together. Finding coming together. what's in common, right? You're, 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 you're right. And I know we're running out of time, so we've got to wrap this one up. And, and I want to call to action. So we have very little we can do. Freedom of the press is a constitutional right. And I don't want their rights taken away like I don't want my rights taken away. So in, in regards speech. to... Right. More the, speech. You fight speech with more speech. That's yeah, that's, you fight speech with more up. speech, right? And, and but what also is that there's very little that can be done outside of you as a as a consumer. Don't if you're not reliant or primary with them, if you start to diversify your palette and you find better products, you should do that. You wouldn't buy a car that breaks down as soon as you go out of of the lot, right? Because every night you're being lied to in some of these major media outlets, or they're just, they're just pumping you up on something that's false. Like we talked about in our last episode. So when you, when it comes down to the media and what they're feeding you, it's just understanding that and saying, you know what, I'm not going to go to McDonald's every night. I'm going to, I'm going to cook at home more often. I'm going to do my own research. I'm going to go to a, a different type of restaurant. What about something indie? What about something independent? There is a plethora of information out there now. That's the beautiful thing about free speech and America and the United States is that availability information. So it's not a republic if you can keep it, right? It's, it's your sanity. It's your, it's your mental fortitude in regards to the media environment that's attacking you. Because media has an agenda. And so you have to be beside media and, and look at media and understand it, not be a, a slave to it without better words, Mike. So I'll kind of throw it at you to, to wrap us up. Yeah, no, that's a great mindfulness point. You know, be the observer. Don't be, you know, you're not your thoughts. Don't be their thoughts. <laughs> 
be the observer of all of these things. Okay. And then you pick, you know, you select the things you can verify are facts and accept those into your, you know, model until something changes and we have to be open to change. We always have to be open to change and learning what's new because everything we talk about and everything we describe was created for us by us as humans. And so it's always going to change our perception of it or the reality of it. That's the nature of life. And, you know, Mark Twain, or we might have an episode coming up on Mark Twain because <laughs> we find him quite in inspirational as an American. Um, I think he was attributed to the quote, don't let education get in the way of learning. And we will behoove you. Don't let your education get in the way of learning. Okay. You need to just keep expanding your mind. What was learned in the past is probably not standing the test of time. Some of those things are volatile. They're not cold stone, hard facts. So be open to that. And then if you can, one last call to action will be, um, something very material and nerdy and boring. If you use Google or Yahoo or whatever Bing, whatever the search engines are as of late, any search engine you use comes with an operating manual. <laughs> it has a set of operators, little codes and switches that you can put into your searches to make them more powerful. Um, you, I, we recently posted something on our Facebook page um, with a short list of shortcuts for Google specifically, but all of the search engines have this. And so if you search in the search engine for the operators, you know, whatever being operators uh, for searching, and you'll get a set of commands that you can string together in there and it'll help you in many ways, those tools will help you isolate things that are closer to facts or help you identify where bias may be if you're so inclined into digging in and taking a little bit more command control over what you find on the internet. You, you can use the browser as a tool with these keywords and with these operators. So I highly recommend you explore those a little bit, start playing with just one or two um, and see how that goes. Let us know if you have any questions or you want something covered in more detail on that. We have been your hosts. Thank you to Mr. Raymond Wong Jr. And thank you, Mr. Piscatelli. It's truly been over 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's been something, that's for sure. For information on this and other episodes, head over to citizendogood.com and click on podcast. While you're there, hit up our Contact Us page and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from the community. Special thanks to you, our listeners. We save the best for last. You are the best and you have been for years. Thanks for your support. We know it's painful and we love you. Intro music sampled from OK Class by Ozzy Jock under Creative Commons license through freemusicarchive.org. Other music provided royalty-free through Fizzly and Studios, Inc.